Hello, gentlemen. Welcome to section eight entitled Flame Tests Identifying Metals. Now, today in laboratory, we dealt with a few compounds and we identified them by setting them on fire or adding energy into those compounds. So, in the investigation, each compound consisted of a metal ion and chlorine. When each metal ion was placed in the hot flame, we witnessed a unique color change or a unique color being created. Let's first review what an ion is. An ion is an electrically charged atom that has acquired a positive or a negative charge. The ions that we witnessed in class, that we viewed in class, were potassium with a one plus charge, calcium with two plus charge, copper two plus charge, lithium with a one plus charge, sodium with a one plus charge. We'll go over what these charges mean in the future. But for right now, atoms with charges are known as ions. And these ions have their own unique atomic structure. Now all atoms have this atomic structure. They all have a central nucleus. The nucleus is the very dense core of the atom that contains particles called protons and neutrons. In our picture here, the nucleus would be the central part of our atom. Another part of our atom is the electron cloud that's outside of the nucleus. So around the nucleus, there are electrons in this electron cloud that are located in certain energy levels. So these electrons are arranged in specific energy levels represented by these rings here. They can represent my energy levels. I only have one electron here for purposes here, but atoms can have many, many, many electrons. An electron is a subatomic particle that occurs outside the nucleus. It has a charge of negative one and a mass of 9.109 times 10 to the negative 28th grams. You don't have to memorize that number, but it's just there to let you know how small they really are. Now, let's talk a little bit more about what happens as we put these ions into the heat. So when these metal ions are placed into the flame, their electrons absorb the heat energy. And they move from their original ground state, we call it, to a higher energy level around the nucleus. So they absorb energy. That energy makes them go to a higher energy level from the original ground state. When this happens, the electron is said to be in the excited state. So think of an electron gaining energy and he's excited. He's going crazy, going nuts up there. But just like in reality, this does not last for long. In chemistry, things like to be stable. The excited state is not very stable. So once an electron gains energy, absorbs energy, it goes from the ground state to the excited state, but it's not very stable up there, so eventually the atom is going to have to come back down. And when it does, that's when the magic happens. When the electron comes back down from its excited state, it emits radiation or electromagnetic waves that we refer to as light. So it's when the electron comes back down, it releases light in the form of, well, it releases photons in the form of light that we see. So the color of the light we see with our eyes is dependent upon the amount of energy originally absorbed and then released. Each substance, whether you have potassium ions, copper ions, calcium ions, they will absorb different amounts of energy, meaning and then they will release that energy, which is a different amount from one another. That's why they have different colors, different energy absorption and um, I guess emittance will emit different light, different colors of light. Now, during this journey of this electron, this is a symbol for electron, E minus, going from its ground state to the excited state, energy is conserved. Energy went in as heat and came out as light. Those guys who took physics, you know about the conservation of energy. Energy can't be created or destroyed, it's just transformed. So this is a, a case of that happening here in chemistry. We put heat energy in through fire or heat, and it came out as light once that electron came back down to its ground state. One thing to note, this is not a chemical reaction. So that color change that we saw, that color, a flash of light was not a chemical reaction. Because in a chemical reaction, 
the product is different than your starting material. Here we have potassium ions to begin with. We put it in, we introduced heat energy to it. The electron went up to its excited state, came back down to its ground state, and we still had a potassium ion. It did not change into something different, thus it was not a display of a chemical reaction. The metal compounds were not chemically altered. So gentlemen, take notes on this. Come to class prepared to discuss it. Adios.